Jeppi. It sounds like a small Italian car, but actually it's an ETF that for the past year has outperformed the S&P 500. That's right, while the S&P was losing money, Jeppi wasn't. And all of this while paying a dividend of more than 11%. Not bad. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just sharing my personal experiences. Always do your own research before investing. Blue chip stocks like Progressive Insurance, Mastercard and Coca-Cola sounds like a boring portfolio of value stocks, not an income fund that pays over 11%. Actually, those three names are some of the roughly 120 stocks that make up the portfolio. They're chosen from the S&P 500 and they're selected mostly for their low volatility compared to the S&P 500. So we've got solid returns in a, let's face it, crappy market, high income and blue chip stocks in the portfolio. This all sounds like my dream fund. If anything, it maybe even sounds a bit too good to be true. So today we'll look at how Jeppy is generating these returns, the risks involved and whether I chose to invest in it. jeppy has been getting a lot of attention. The Google search results over the past year have been going in one direction, pretty much up every month. And more importantly, it's been attracting a lot of money. Now, the media focuses on funds like Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation Fund, ticker symbol ARKK, but with more than $18 billion under management, Jeppy's actually now more than double the size of the ARK Innovation Fund. To understand JP, let's start with who's behind it. And it's right there in the name. The JP Morgan Equity Premium Exchange Traded Fund is a mouthful. So now you know why everyone just refers to it by the ticker symbol JEPI. Unlike most ETFs, JEPI isn't pegged to an index. It's part of a growing trend of ETFs that are actively managed. In fact, at a turnover of 195%, JEPI is very actively managed. And as an ETF, you can buy or sell it just like buying or selling a stock. You could use a US broker, or if you're from outside the US, you could use interactive brokers. I'll put a link in the description. And most ETFs, including JP, are traded on the New York Stock Exchange, ARCA. It's a fairly young fund. It was born in May of 2020, which is when most of the world was focused on dealing with the global pandemic. The expense ratio is 35 basis points, which is higher, of course, than an index fund because it's actively managed. But for an actively managed fund, that's a relatively low number. As for yield, some of the stocks in the portfolio pay dividends, but most of the income comes from selling covered call options, which we'll get to shortly. Any fund should be judged against its benchmark and its objectives. So let's take a look at Jeppy's Three objectives, they're pretty simple. Goal number one, generate the majority of returns associated with the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is the benchmark. Since inception in 2020, Jeppy's total return is 38%. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 has returned 38%. So did it achieve the majority of the returns? Well, I'd say better than that, it achieved equal to the S&P 500. Goal number two, provide less volatility. In other words, it shouldn't fall as far during a market downturn. Well, as of December 31st, 2022, Jeppy has a beta of 0.62. So if the S&P 500 were to decline, say 20%, then Jeppy would fall by 12.4%. So given the beta, yes, it's on track and succeeding at goal number two. And goal number three, provide incremental income. In other words, more income than the S&P 500, which is pretty easy because the S&P only produces a yield of less than 2%. So I'd say yes to all three goals. I've already mentioned a few of Jeppy's holdings, plenty of solid names in there. We're not going to go through all 120 of them, but if you zoom out, you can see that they're quite well diversified across all the major sectors. And that stock portfolio of roughly 120 names makes up 80% of the Jeppy portfolio. So what about the other 20%? Up to 20% of the fund is made up of equity linked notes or ELNs. These are debt instruments and they can get pretty complicated, but I'll go through some of the basic key features of the ELNs that Jeppy uses. The first one is they provide a guaranteed return of principal, so that's good. The second feature is that Jeppy receives a predetermined percentage of the upside of the instrument which is called the participation rate. And the remainder of the upside goes to the issuer of the note, which in this case is a bank. So effectively, Jeppy's lending money to a bank, the bank invests the money, 
and then they split the returns. And thirdly, the purpose of these particular ELNs is to generate income. And they do that by selling covered calls on the S&P 500 index. And that's a fairly conservative option income strategy where you sell the right to the upside of an investment above an agreed upon price. And they do this every month to generate income. My bull case for JP is pretty simple. They just keep doing what they've been doing because obviously the numbers say that so far it's working quite well. But let's take a quick peek at why it's working. First of all, they focused on low volatility value stocks during a high volatility market. And here are some examples of that at the sector level where JP is focusing more on value than growth compared to the S&P 500. The second factor that's been working in Jeppy's favor recently is high market volatility. And that's helpful to the fund because the income that they generate from the ELNs, selling covered calls, is much higher when the market is volatile. And you could argue that current factors like war, inflation, and central banks fighting inflation using higher interest rates are all going to continue to cause volatility to remain high. I'd summarize the bull case for JP by saying that it works in most market conditions, but specifically in markets that are moderately up, moderately down or flat, but simultaneously volatile, meaning prices are fluctuating a lot on any given day or week. The bear case for JP is more about factors that are not as visible. Now, if you read JP Morgan's website about the fund, of course, everything looks rosy, but I wanted to know what's the downside. So I dove into a bunch of analysis articles on Seeking Alpha, which I've now been using for about six years. If you like to do your own research, which of course I recommend, they sometimes run promotions, but generally they offer a discount on the first year. Link in the description. So the first negative factor for JP is actually about when things improve because so far JP's performance has been to a large extent during a bear market, and we know that it's been doing pretty well. But when the next bull market comes, it's not going to capture 100% of the upside. It's designed for low volatility, so while it doesn't ride the roller coaster all the way down, it doesn't ride the roller coaster all the way up either. Over the long term, you can make an argument that a fund like Schwab's SEHD is going to beat it for total returns. Here's a comparison of JEPI, the S&P 500, and SCHD over JEPI's lifetime. SCHD wins, but it does pay a much lower dividend, about 3.5%. Now, I know SCHD has a lot of fans. I would make the argument that maybe it's an idea to combine SCHD and JEPI to get a hybrid that produces some growth and some income. Second negative factor, not very obvious, and that is that the ELNs come with some counterparty risk. Specifically, the risk is that the bank that issues the ELN takes such a massive loss on the investment that even though they've guaranteed the principal, they're bankrupt and incapable of paying back the ELN. Now, these are very reputable banks, so obviously this would only happen in very extreme financial conditions. And when I say extreme, I mean on the scale of the Lehman Brothers collapse. But this risk is mitigated somewhat by spreading out the ELNs across different banks in different countries with different maturity dates. Now, obviously, I think it's unlikely that any of these banks would fail, but if, say, one bank failed, it wouldn't really move the needle that much, and even less likely that all of them would fail, obviously. But if that happened, remember these ELNs comprise a maximum of 20% of the fund. And the other thing I'm not crazy about for the ELNs is that they're opaque. We don't know the details of each bank's covered call transactions. Factor number three for the bear case is that the yield fluctuates even if the price doesn't. There's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, the dividends that are coming into the portfolio are usually paid quarterly, but JEPI is distributing monthly, so there's going to be some volatility there. And secondly, the income that's coming from the ELN portion of the portfolio is affected by the level of volatility in the market. More volatility, higher income. So my point here is don't count on the 11% to pay your monthly bills because next month it might be 9% or 10% or 12%, who knows. And the last factor for the bear case is somewhat obvious, it's a new fund. So there isn't that much track record we can use to assess the risk. The two portfolio managers are experienced and they've done a great job of selecting value stocks with low volatility during 2022, but we don't know how they would do during a sustained recession or for that matter, a sustained bull market. I'd summarize the bear case by saying that JP could underperform if there's a sustained bull market and it could take some losses if there's a massive black swan event. My take on JEPI is that it's doing particularly well now because we're in a period of high volatility and I expect that volatility to continue. So I bought some earlier this month. If it had a longer history, I'd probably buy more of it. I've seen some Seeking Alpha investors who've put comments into the forum saying, 
they have a third of their portfolio in Jeppy. That's way too much for me. Given the short history, I wouldn't allocate personally more than about 5%, but not financial advice. Going forward, if market volatility falls and therefore the yield shrinks, I might sell it. Otherwise, I plan to hold it for now. That's it for Jeppy. If you have any thoughts on the fund, feel free to put them in the comments below. More armchair income coming soon. Volatility periods, more income, low volatility periods.